Hi, my name is Ivory, and uh, first of all, I must say thank you to the Heritage Foundation Network Belize for this wonderful symposium and for all of the work that you do in promoting culture in Belize. And uh, greetings as well to, to you viewers. Thank you so very much for, for taking the time to view my presentation. Today, I will be sharing a sort of survey of um, Belizean literature, highlighting those writers who have used Belize Creole in various genres between 1920 and 2020. My presentation is titled, The Writer as a Cultural Activist, 100 Years of Creole Usage in Belizean Literature. And I'm going to share my screen with you briefly just to show you a snapshot of some of the um, some of the writers whom I will be referencing. And so who we have here um, in this snapshot are James Martinez, Milton Arana, James Elliott, Colville Young, Evan Hyde, Z. Edgel, Leroy Young, Kieran Gabriel, Keisha Rodriguez, and myself, Ivory Kelly. Some of the, um, the Belizean authors who have um, used Creole in some notable ways, in rather extensive ways, um, over the past century. So now, by way of definition, what I mean by cultural activism, uh, to borrow Buesner and Arnold's definition in their article titled Cultural Activism in the Community, it is an intermingling cultural activism, an intermingling of art, activism, performance, and politics that includes engagement with a broad spectrum of creative practice as a means to challenge dominant ways of seeing and constructing the world. In post-colonial Belize, the dominant imperialist cultures that have pervaded as a result of our colonial history and today's geopolitical realities have been British and Anglo-American cultures. Therefore, we will see that from the earliest period of Belize's literary development, our writers have challenged British or foreign dominance, even though they may not necessarily have referred have done so consciously or referred to um, use the term activism to describe their subversive writings. Two of the ways in which Belizean writers have challenged the status quo and asserted their cultural identity are through their choices of subject matter and the use of their mother tongues. These include, to varying degrees, Spanish, Garifuna, Maya Mopan, Maya Keche, and Creole. And this paper, this presentation, focuses on the Creole language and its deployment by Belizean writers as a form of cultural activism. We begin with a poem published in 1920 by James Martinez. Written in Creole, the poem is titled The Jazz Band and was published in Martinez's book, Caribbean Jingles, which was one of the earliest literary publications by a native Belizean. If you attended primary school in Belize in the, eight, in the 1980s or before, um, chances are you learned Martinez's very popular poem, Success of Life. In this poem that I'm going to read now, titled The Jazz Band, the speaker is describing his first encounter with jazz. And I am going to share my screen with you again so that you might read along and, and see the Creole um, usage in the poem and are able to read along um, if, you, if you wish now. So let me just share my screen. So I trust you're able to see the text on the screen of Martinez's the jazz band. Oops. Okay. Good. All right. The Jazz Band by James Martinez. I've been to listen lately and hear the jazz band play. And goodness me, my nerves, they nearly bust. 
They kick up such a squabble and they make such latter noise. I never hear such instrumental fuss. The instruments ain't many, as in the regular band, and to look at them you never would suspect that the polished looking cornet and the slim and neat trombone could ever raise such row as what they make. First, the clarinet starts squeaking some notes of discontent, then the bass begin to bellow out a few, and the trombone join the chorus with some slow discordant sound, and the drum begin to beat a brisk tattoo. And the row is now quite heated and they have a big dispute as if they're going to end up in a fight. And the carnet starts a bleating and the bass commences to roar and the trombone blasts and howl with all his might. So they quarrel and they squabble and they scream and screech and howl till they drop into a kind of stifling groan. And you wonder... As you listen, what is going to happen next? Then you hear the trombone give a dying moan. And so you sit and listen till your head commences to swim and you feel yourself like you're going to drop. Then you hear an awful squealing and another startling sound as the cymbal make a clap for them to stop. And so the tune is finished if tune it really was, and the instrument is put aside to rest, and you feel your nerve are throbbing, and your head are aching hard, and you think to get some quiet is the best. The Jazz Band by James Martinez. Martinez's Caribbean Jingles, wherein that poem is contained, was, as far as the research indicates, the first Belizean publication that uses um, Creole extensively. As an aside, Martinez was not a Belize city Creole, as one might have expected or suspected, but a Garifuna from Toledo in the South which is a lovely irony that deserves its own presentation, I'm sure you would agree. But Martinez was one of the very few prominent poets prior to the 1970s who embraced Creole. Others in that small fraternity included Milton Arana, James Elliott, and Colville Young. Most of the other leading writers of the time, poets and writers of the time, um, did not write in Creole at all, even though most of them were Creoles, and uh, the majority of the population at the time spoke Creole as a first language. This is prior to the 1970s. Because, as you know, those were the oppressive colonial days when Creole was regarded as bad language, bad English, or a corruption of the English language. And school children were beaten for speaking in, um, in Creole and other um, in indigenous languages in school. And so, um, no surprise then um, that only a few of our prominent writers were embracing Creole as prominently as did um, Martinez and Elliot and the others that I'm um, highlighting today. So now, at this point, I will read an excerpt from Colville Young's folk drama, Riding Hearts, which was written around 1970 and later published in the 1998 anthology Penguin Chukme, Six Belizean Plays. Widely performed in the 70s and 80s, Riding Hass is a superb depiction of one of Belize's popular folk characters, Bra Anansi, or Bra Hanasi who is half man, half spider. Anansi, who originated in West Africa, is a popular folk, folk character, not only in Belize, but throughout the, um, the Caribbean. And he is a trickster in the Colville Young play that I'm going to read the excerpt from. He uses his brain in the absence of brawn to outwit the powerful Bra Taiga. And again, I'm going to share uh, my screen with you so that you can see the text in Creole and read along if you please. All right, an excerpt from the opening section of Colville Young's Writing House. Creole people say, when man no got nothing fit, it got a savannah go tell co morning. 
So now there's that one time long before you and me dream for ban and I to feel idle and I make up a mind for mischief. And I see gone the woman tongue, straight in the spectacle, look all wrong, quick and the girl there, fresh as ever, and boast to the crowd by Belize River that he know how to ride with whip, with spur, stick in a saddle like any burr burr. The girl them giggle and shout out, Cha, you think them like what a fool we know? All we bandits be willing for bet, and I see never set eye pan bridle yet. Brah Nasi, he start to row. If begs till the puff up, here we are now. On the top, they like piam piam in the grass. Tiger, that for me, father, best riding horse. So here, there we have some of the opening lines of that delightful folk drama by Cowboy Young. Now, in the 70s also, Evan Hyde published extensive works in, in using Creole, including the play Hard Time and his brilliant uh, memoir, North American Blues. Similarly, Z. Edgell, especially in her first novel, Becca Lamb, published in 1982, utilized Creole very effectively. And then in the 1990s through to the second decade of the 21st century, poets like Erwin Jones, Leroy Young, Kieran Gabriel, and other spoken word artists have been throwing it down and writing it down in Creole, sometimes fully, sometimes partially, talking about how life hard out here. Yeah. And the Lysians can't stand the pressure, but their only resort, it seems, is to call the talk show. Publications from these poets include Erwin Jones's popular Get a Food, published in 2007, and the 501 Spoken Words Anthology, Poetic Narcotics, which was published in 2019. And um, recently, Volume 2 of that anthology was released as well. So you can look out for, um, for these texts and enjoy these um, exemplars of Creole usage in our literature. Throughout these years, however, the versions of Creole utilized in our literature up to the, um, the early part of this 21st century, by and large, have been acrolectal and mesolectal. Creole versions that are close to English. And this has been the trend among contemporary um, writers in the Anglophone Caribbean in general who wish to reach a broader reading audience in English um, while retaining our unique Caribbean and, in our case, Belizean voice. But then in 2007, a monumental development took place here in Belize when the Creole Council published the Creole English Dictionary after years of work developing a spelling system that made it possible for Creole to be written in a standardized way. And publications directly spawned or enabled um, by this development of the standardized um, spelling system have been the Creole Council's own weekly column, Wewegafise, published in the Reporter um, newspaper as well as BelmopanOnline.com. Um, the New Testament translation by the Creole Council as well. Um, and then there is an extensive body of religious literature um, as well as music and movies produced by or translated by the Jehovah's Witnesses in Belize. Um, we also have had literary works by poets and authors such as Colin Hyde, Keisha Rodriguez, and um, her, her colleagues in the 501 Spoken um, spoken Word group. And those poets I have um, referenced earlier, Kieran Gabriel, um, Grandmaster Lee, Grandmaster um, Young, um, and others. And um, an increasing number of political um uh, uh, and public service advertisements countrywide. Finally, about my own my own use of um, Creole as a fiction writer. 
In 2019, I published the short story Still Ban in, in English, Stillborn, um, in a bilingual collection of stories titled Pangering. Stillborn was originally written in English and quote translated by myself and my colleague and friend um, Sylvana Ud. And so in this opening scene, I'm going to read you a very brief excerpt from We Meet Diana, the protagonist, who is originally from Belize, but is now married and living in the United States. She has just received an email from her first child's father, after 14 years of estrangement. So I am going to share again my screen with you so that you can see the text in a standardized Creole. Diana stare upon the email subject for a good while. I think it should have deleted. It stayed there for a while to contemplate it, but then it changed in mind. Deep breath, nice and steady. It set up straight in the dining chair and click the email open. 4, 22nd April 2016. Dear Diana, I know I have brought my promise. I'm sorry for the intrude. I get your email from the Chapel Hill website. For tell her the truth, I don't even know why I did write. But I guess I'm a wire know that I write by letter to one every year for my birthday. I got a mass. Light one candle, then I come to my office and write to one. Now that it would have turned 14 this year, and my birthday they come, I find myself the think about her even more. I imagine her the play sports, all in me and everybody stick out like my one day when I don't know that age, LOL. And full of light to a bet because surely he know I inherit your 100 watt smile. Forgive me for the bear my heart like this. I don't want to take up more of your time. My best to your family, Omar. P.S. I mean, really did love you, Diana. Okay, so um, there you have the opening, a short excerpt from the opening scene of Still Born, written in standardized Creole. And so now, here we are in 2021, uh, even as we continue to grapple with this global pandemic, we have much to celebrate. Not only the use of Creole in Belizean literature over the past century, but we likewise celebrate and encourage the use of all our indigenous languages in our literature. Granted, these are still few and far between, but I am encouraged by events such as this culture symposium and conversations that I know people have been having, like my colleagues at the University of Belize who talk about aspiring to offer um, language courses in Garifuna, Maya, Creole, etc. And I urge the Ministry of Culture to prioritize um, literacy and literary publications in all our mother tongues. In closing, I'd like to thank the staff of the National Heritage Library here in Belmopan, and by extension, the National Library Service and Information System for assistance with access to some of the texts I've, um, some of the texts I referenced, especially the older ones that are no longer in circulation. I'm also very grateful to the National Creole Council of Belize for the extremely important work they continue to do in promoting literacy and literary public Publications in Creole, and to all our cultural activists, present and past, who's, on whose shoulders I stand. And of course, um, thanks to you for taking the time to view this presentation. And if you wish to connect with me, you may do so um, at my email address, ivorykellybelize at gmail.com or um, my social media link, my social media handles are ivorykellywriter, both on Facebook and Instagram. I go by ivorykellywriter, or you can contact me through my website, ivorykelly.com. Come.